Hi guys, my name is Shane Willett. I am currently an assistant behavior analyst. I am working towards my BCBA certification or my board certified behavior analyst certification. Um, I'm currently a master's student at Florida Institute of Technology. Uh, for you applied behavior anal analysts, we know that line graphs are our best friend, um, but we also know that Excel is never our best friend. So I am recording myself making a reversal design in this video so that um, maybe I will be making it just a little bit easier for you in the future. Um, I'm going to show you my tips and tricks for doing it pretty quick and some tools that I find that are handy dandy. That's about it. So um, let me share my screen. Okay. So here is my Excel sheet. I hope you can all see that. Um, basically all I've done so far is I've put in some sessions. Okay, so in this fake scenario, I've got 20 sessions. These could be dates, whatever you want. Um, just to make it easy for this video, I am just putting numbers. And then here is some made up data that I created. A reversal design looks like an ABAB design. In our case, it's going to be baseline, intervention, we're going to remove that back to baseline, intervention, okay? So we are adding an intervention, taking it away, adding it again, and that's how we're going to add. Um, for graphing purposes, I really only need this data column right here. So I'm just going to highlight this, insert, and I'm going to find this little icon that looks like a data, like a line graph with data points. Now I'm gonna scroll all the way over here where it says line with markers. Click. Does this look like anything that we ever see in research or that we would use? Okay, no. Also, does this look like something that's actually useful to us? Like, can I determine anything from this? No, I have no idea what's going on in this graph. So we are gonna make this awesome and very clear and easy to read. Um, I'm also going to make it a little bit bigger so that we can see what's going on. Okay, so our first thing is we have no idea what our x and y axis is. So let's start there. I am going to go to chart design. Oh, we're already there. <laughs> Add chart element. We need a horizontal axis, axis and I need a vertical axis. Okay, in our case and in most cases, our x-axis will be sessions, okay? We also have to make this black. So I've highlighted the words. I'm gonna go to my home page, make it black. And I'm also gonna make it a little bit more prominent. So let's go to a 12, great. Um, here's our y-axis. We're just gonna put, because this is a generic data set that I just made up, we're gonna say responses per Per minute. Again, I'm going to double click it or drag and highlight. I need to make it black. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. That's not totally required, but I think it looks good. And we want things to look good. Um, another issue I'm seeing in along our axis, axes. Hold on, let me try and click on it. Come on. Is one, our numbers are gray. And two, we have zero tick marks, which makes it just harder to read. So we're gonna make it easy to read. So I'm gonna add my tick marks first. Um, something I forgot to show you was um, this formatting pane. So to get there, you click on format and you'll see this little icon with a little blue paintbrush, format pane. When you click on that, this whole side pops up and this is, this will be your best friend in the graphing world, okay? Because um, it's just an easy go-to to change colors, to change shapes, to change sizes of anything that you've got in a graph. So in regards to these tick marks, um, I'm going to go over to this little bar graph right here on my formatting pane and click on tick marks. Look at that. Um, in, our, in our graphs, we are going to keep our tick marks. I click on major type and outside. Okay, you can't really see them because they are like a white gray. So I'm gonna click on solid. Oh, no, I'm not gonna do that. 
no fill, no fill. Line. I'm going to go to solid and I'm going to turn this from like a light white gray that we can't see to black. And now we can see our tick marks. Um, I am also going to change my numbers. Home. So I've just, all I've done is I've just clicked on this X axis and it will just bring a box around it. Um, to change numbers and words, I always just use this font box right here. Um, and I'm just going to click on black and my numbers turn black. There they are. I'm going to make them just a little bit bigger so we can see them. Great. Um, and then one, yeah, great. So here we're going to click out and we're just going to admire my x axis real fast. So when I changed, so when I right here, when I came here and I did line solid and I changed it to black, that not only changed my tick marks to be black so that I could see them, it also created a solid black horizontal line, which is exactly what I need. So if I click out of it like this, you can see that. And so we're going to do the exact same thing but on the vertical axis. So again, I'm going to highlight it. Um, I need tick marks on the Y axis as well. Tick marks, major type. I'm going to stick those outside. Again, I can't really see them. And also I need that vertical axis to be black axis. So I'm going to align solid. Just make sure you're black. Great. Um, my numbers are small and they're gray. So I'm going to go up here to home and get my font click on black. And I think I had my other one at 10. Let's see. I made it 10.5. So I'm gonna make my y axis at a 10.5 font. Perfect. Great. Um, and then when I click out, you can see that I have my x axis with my tick marks on the outside and my y a solid black y axis again with my tick marks outside of my graph. So far, so good. Okay, let's change our title while we're at it. Let's do <laughs> reversal design graph because that is what we are building. Again, this can be whatever you want. I have highlighted it. I just do it by clicking. You can do it by highlighting and I need to make it black. I'm also going to bold it just to make it look good. Oh, no. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. So the next most prominent thing that I see wrong with this graph are my data path, my data points, because one, they're blue. And two, we know that the lines, the data paths cannot be going through a condition change line. And here in my data, I obviously have four different conditions. So we need to split those up, okay? First, I'm gonna change the whole thing to black. So just by clicking on the data path, I will it will highlight all of the markers for me. I'm going to go over to my um, my formatting pane. Let's change our lines first. So I need a solid line and I need it black. Easy. Marker, I need a solid fill and again I need it black. But with these we also need to change the border because if you look right now I've got it's filled black but then the border of my dot is blue. Okay, so I need to change both, which is super annoying, but fine, whatever. So I want the border to be solid, and I also need that to be black, okay? So if we click out of here, just to admire, I've got black markers, I've got a black line, great. Now, how do we disconnect the data path so it's not crossing our phase change lines? Great question. So I can click on the data path. If I click it twice, it will just highlight that one pathway. So in our case, it's going to be between sessions five and six. I'm going to go over to my paint canister in my formatting pane. And I do not want a line, so all I'm going to click is no line. Easy peasy. Same thing, I've got a session, I've got an in a condition change line change between session 10 and 11. So I'm going to go over here, make sure that line's clicked, no line. Great. And my next one is between session 15 and 16. So I'm going to go over here, click on this one, and again, no line. So great. So now we're starting to see that I've got four different conditions. One, two, three, four. Awesome. So far, so good. And everything's black and it's looking great. Um, 
So how do we add the physical condition change lines? Great question. Here we go. Insert shapes and just this boring straight line right here. Okay. So we've got it between the five and the six on this nice little tick mark right here. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you two things. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and I'm going to start drawing this line. As you can see, and I'm not pressing any other button. If I'm just drawing a line, I can put it anywhere. This is going to really stink if I'm trying to make three lines, one, two, three, and I, all, I want them all to look the same and I want them to be the same size. So I'm gonna show you a little trick to keep them straight. I just deleted it, by the way. So let's go reinsert it, shapes, line. So again, I'm gonna start it at that five, between five and six on that tick mark, click it, and then I'm gonna take my other finger, I'm gonna hold down shift. Now, if I'm holding down shift, I cannot move it left and right. So that will make it straight up and down. And I'm just gonna bring it to this top horizontal line that Excel had already given me, okay? It is blue. So on my Excel, this box pops up right away and I can choose a color. Typically, I, I will just click on this black box. If that does not pop up for you, Go ahead and go back to your format pane because again, that's your best friend. Go to line, make sure it says solid line, and then see how it's got this blue, this white, I'm gonna make it, or it says blue, so I'm gonna change it black, easy. So you can do either up in the left-hand corner or always you have your formatting pane. Let's make two more. So insert shapes line between 10 and 11. Holding down shift, bring it up to that line. Great, I'm gonna turn it black and we've got one more. Shapes, line, 15 and 16. Hold down, shift, all the way up to that horizontal line. And make it black. Okay, so this is just a tip for me personally. A lot of people, when they get this graph pulled up, the way that Excel creates it from the data, um, they'll automatically click on these horizontal lines right here and delete them. I do that very last um, because I use it, one, to keep those, cha those condition change lines the same height. And then when I'm adding the condition labels, um, I want them again on the same line and I can just use those horizontal lines that Excel already gives me to keep those relatively even. So I keep them to the end. It's up to you. Speaking of labels, let's add those. Okay, let me move my face. So it's in the corner. Insert. Maybe I need to move my face again. There it is. Okay, text. Text box right here. Super easy. I'm just going to create this little box. And my first phase, as we've noted up here, is just baseline. Okay. Great. I will move it in a second, I promise. We've got to add three more. So bear with me. Here's my other box. I'm just going to do intervention because this is a very generic graph that we are creating together. Now we are going to remove our intervention so we can measure some baseline data again. And then one more, we're gonna pull it back in and we're gonna see our intervention working, changing behavior, which is awesome. That's exactly what we wanna see. Okay, great. So again, I keep these horizontal lines for a reason. So I am just going to move this guy so it is sitting in the middle right on top of that horizontal line. Intervention looks like he's already there. So I'm gonna move this guy right on top of that horizontal line. And then my intervention guy right on top of my horizontal line. Then I can click on these horizontal lines right here, go back to my formatting pane and click no line. And it gets rid of those. So far, so good. Um, last thing I want to do is I'm going to click my box. I'm gonna go back to my formatting pane and my border. I do not want any border. 
which is kind of weird why I'm specifying that, but it is a requirement for research articles and it's very professional. So no border. If I click out of here, you will see that now my graph is just a white box and there's zero border around it. Let me make sure I've got everything. Oh, and I do want to show you one last step. Um, I'm going to pull up a Word doc. So I'm going to stop sharing just for a second. Actually, let me save this really fast so we don't lose it. Okay, stop sharing. I'm going to pull up just an empty Word doc. Just because when you do submit these things or if you need to put them in and um, write it up in an assessment or you just need it in a document, like a Word doc, I do want you to know how to um, copy and paste it so it works. So I'm going to share my screen again, go to my Word doc, and here we are. Um, it doesn't let me go between pages. So here we go. We're back on our Excel page. I'm going to click my box, my big box. I do not want this middle part highlighted. I just want this big part. So I'm gonna click somewhere out here by the title, make sure my whole graph is highlighted. To copy and paste, I simply right click, copy, easy, okay. And then we are going to go to my Word doc, my empty Word doc that I just opened. And here we go. So this has been copied from the original Excel. Remember, we are clicking by the title. So in Excel, we'll click by the title to make sure the entire graph is selected and not just within the axes. And then when we go to our document, we are going to right click, paste special. And I use PDF pictures also available. Picture, in my opinion, is more blurry and a little uglier. So I stick to PDF and it'll come out beautiful as one picture instead of a million different parts. Um, and I think that that is all I need to show you for a reversal design graph.